One of the concepts which we've borrowed from environmental history is the idea of conjuncture, that sometimes things that are operating on different time scales and different geographical scales can combine uh, in unexpected ways. Um, sometimes uh, a trivial event can have great consequences. So one of the things we've been looking at is there's sort of issues of, you know, when does climate change impact a particular society? Uh, what were people doing before they were impacted? Had they essentially drawn down all the natural capital that the environment had to offer and filled it up with, with people? Or was there a good deal of slack left in the system between where they were and what they, they had to do to survive? In the North Atlantic area, you can see some conjunctures coming together with the initial spread of this mixed Nordic Celtic population out across the North Atlantic. Um, one of the things that's happening, of course, is the, the Viking expansion from Scandinavia, uh, driven by many feet of factors, many of them probably simply historical. Some have to do with wealth coming in from the outside of the system. But this generates a sort of knock-on effect where people, farming people at least, appear for the first time in Iceland and Greenland. And the conjuncture here is with a period of climate stability, which is both warmer and less stormy than in time periods both before and after. So North, exp North expansion across the North Atlantic is bringing together a bunch of different factors, technological change, improvements in seafaring, improvements in navigation, intensified warfare in the North Sea area, uh, all of which is leading people and giving them lots of incentive to try their hand someplace else. And this is also a time period when times were probably never better for people to make go of it in Iceland and Greenland if they're coming in with a North Atlantic generalized farming uh, economy. Another aspect of conjuncture to think about is in North Greenland later on, when times are beginning to get hard. Uh, climate change affects the North Greenlanders very strongly after about 1250 or so. Drift ice is coming in from South Greenland in the summertime. Uh, this is also coming at the same time where in Europe, the interest in low bulk, high value prestige goods like walrus ivory, the sort of thing the Greenlanders have been supplying for generations, that continues to be of some interest, but is replaced in many cases in terms of decorative or, or work with metalwork um, or walrus ivory coming from other sources closer to Europe, like the Barents Sea. At the same time, you're getting a lack of interest in the key Greenlandic trade product, you're also getting the situation because the drift ice is making it much more difficult for people to get from Iceland to Greenland. So the Greenlanders' isolation, as it seems to be increasing in the later Middle Ages, is a product both of environmental change and also economic change happening outside their control. A third example of conjuncture is the Norse Greenlanders facing this reduced interest in their fundamental trade product, walrus ivory, from Europe. At the same time, they're subjected to increasing contact from Native American populations, Thule people, who are the ancestors of modern Eskimo, Inuit people of the Eastern Arctic, coming into Greenland for the first time, probably sometime after the year 1200. By the year 1300, we're probably seeing permanent Inuit winter settlements down in the North areas, <clears throat> intensifying contact between the two groups. Not still very well understood, but it's worth noting that the very few examples we have of mention of contact between Norse and the people they called the Skraling in Greenland after 1300 are all about conflict. So if the Greenlanders, the Norse Greenlanders, are facing climate change and the reduced contact with Europe, by chance, by conjuncture, they're also facing this increasing cultural contact situation, which may be not playing out in ways very favorable to them.